By the way, just so you guys know, Texas is one of those at-will recording states. So if you, for some reason, needed to record something during the class, you can record audio of anything if it, if it does. This will be up there, and it's not audio, so you don't need to, but you can. Um, we handing out the handout. But before I did that, I wanted to show you. If you want to write them here. focus on kind of information, not on instruction. Crazily. So if you're online, go out to the modules and then go to chapter notes and scroll down. And if you click on that, load up for you and you'll have exactly what you're looking at there. And you can follow along with us. And what we do is give you guys uh, about a few minutes, take a look through these questions and just try to answer them yourself. It's not a quiz in the sense that it's an array. It's just a kind of idea for you to see some of the class questions. And one of the things that we kind of do as faculty is we focus on this, right? We focus on the, the problems, the quantitative stuff. But the reality is it's about the So I want you guys to see the type of content question that you're doing. So think of it. Um, you know, sort of answer and we'll
Okay, so hopefully that's enough time for you to go through these. I like starting these way because it gives us a minute to get in the seats. Get ready to go and sit the chat. So in this chapter, we discuss two types of inventory systems, one being periodic and the other being perpetual. And essentially what it is is how often you update your readers. Right? So periodic generally is in the quarter or in the year. And you guys may or may not know this, quarterly financial statements are needed for the same rate that annual financial states. So a lot of times companies would use an estimate for their inventory for the three and then you at the end when it is something open to this perpetual system has their inventory data all right. Now keep in mind when you're recording inventory there are at least two things you need to record right? one you need to record the value of it and then you need to record how much, right? And we'll find these things like that. So, a lot of times they'll have the accounting side of it, and then the people who are doing operation, you'll be able to be able to be on these items. So, you report those full items. With perpetual system, if we know something, it comes up immediately. In periodical system, at the end of the month, you look at the how much they buy, how much they stuff in your salt cell, and this is what I got. And so you have to into how much inventory you sold. And everything is kind of, if we think of an account, any type of account, you talk about, you know, you, this is the beginning balance. Plus, and we're talking about inventory, we add our purchases, we deduct what we use, and that equals our ending balance. Well, if you're in a periodic system, you do an inventory, so you know what the end balance is. So you have your beginning balance of 100, you know you purchased. 1100. So this is your available inventory. And while this is going to be if you see, you know, if you're in the dollars, it would be your top available. And then if you replace you, you have minus the any balance equal to how much you use. So this is the hard math you have to do, right? If I told you the ending balance uh, was 200, you know, you, you look at this and you say, okay, I've got 1,200, my ending balance is 200, I'm going to use the balance, right? That's the math challenge that we have is that we need to use an algebra to solve. But it's not the value of this part, we can, you know, not be positive and but for any three any day time, you can use this, right? If we think about that, you know, what did we receive minus what we paid equals the ending amounts, right? That's just a function of a power. You guys probably all together. Probably too simple for you guys to think about. Right. I guess assets equal liability plus equity. And most of the time, we'll be talking about stockholders. Equity, but other times we'll see it as owners. That would be a small company. Okay. So this is our accounting rating. And then if you think about any account, you know, you, you can figure it out easily with missing. So 
That's the difference between periodic and perpetual, and we'll talk more about it. But essentially, what we're looking at is perpetual, and we want to know what gives us the information right away. So inventory purchases are debited to purchases account. We would use a purchases in a periodic, not in a perpetual. Inventory records are not kept for every item. Again, that's in a periodic, not in a perpetual. Cost of goods sold is recorded with each sale. That is the correct answer. And cost of goods sold is determined as the amount of purchases less the inventory change. And that is under the periodic system. So that is not correct as well. So the answer is C. Okay. When a periodic inventory system is used, purchases of inventory are charged to the inventory account. So that's not correct because they actually get charged to purchases. The balance in the inventory account should approximate inventory on hand. We know that there's two sets of different records, right? And we know the accounting records are not being kept in line with what's inventory. If, if you're a business, especially if you're a you want to know how much you have. So that has to be actually also Two entries are required to record a sale, so not in the periodic system. And then D, the physical count of inventory is required at the end of the accounting period to determine the cost of goods sold. And that's the answer. This you here and that's you know you know at the end based on what you're and so the answer is D. Which method may be used to record cash discounts a company receives for paying its suppliers promptly? So the net method is not correct. The gross method is not correct. The average method is not correct. But both the net method and the gross method can be used. So that is D. Essentially, that tells you if I make a sale, I make a purchase and I have two options. I can record that purchases with my debit purchases. So we have debit. Remember debit, DR, credit CR, and then this will be accounts payable or cash. And, and then you have this return option. So you can either reduce your purchases, let they have return purchases. You can credit purchases or you debit your AP or cash if you got paid back for it. Or you can do it in a net approach and just say, okay, here are my debit for purchases. And this is at the expected. Discount. By the way, if you, like I said, I'm right, we're big and I'm spending it in. Uh, so this is at the expected discount. So if we're up here and we were getting 2%. Discount, we would put this in at $98. And then our credit would be to AP or CAC. Now they just account for 
and that will also be in $98. Now, if for some reason you didn't pay and get in time to get the discount, then you have some sort of thing made. Over here, I might need somebody to call it a risk point. You would, in that case, when you're paying it off, you would debit account payable, and this would be for the hundred, and you would credit $98, and then you would credit tax for the hundred. And essentially, your debit here would be purchase discount watch for two hours. Okay, so those are the two types of approaches that they they set. This one here, if you took the discount, you then Did this one. If you would follow them up here and say, okay, now I can pay this by doing it, I'm going to get a discount. Get it. AD for the 100. And then I'm going to credit cash for $98. Purchase discounts. Yeah. So there's two purchases. And we'll get details in the field. Any questions there? So that was an idea as well. And then the cost of issues from inventory must be deferred until the end of accounting period under which of the following inventory values evaluations. So we have moving average. Moving average allows you sort of each month to kind of use a rolling average from months before. So that would be correct. Moving average requires you to get the cost of all the inventory and then divide that by how many units. And so that's the answer here, B. LIFO perpetual and FIFO are not. Okay, so it says if the company uses the periodic inventory as they're having, and what's the impact? Net income of the company goods in transit that are not there. So if we include goods in transit right on board, should be point which but not in the end inventory. So FOB shipping means that we can ship it becomes live. Buyers Or add up the data it should. You would report to get into inventory purchases, depending on what type of system you're using, and then you would credit accounts payable. And that would be correct. But at year end, they don't count this in. 
So inventory is in this is the potential for yeah. This is the part of this don't use it for now. Okay. So the inventory system would be the because we know we can show the beginning bound plus on the purchase list minus on the ending bound equals what we use, which we now know this is cost of goods sold. Okay. So now we have our purchases that are correct, right? Because we bought this, we're responsible. Our end value is too low, which means that our sense of goods sold is going to be only paid. Any down under dated now what's the most simple income state? It's a basic like the most Right? What is that? My fault. And that's an equal to profit. Now, this is obviously a super consolidated income, but just for basic purposes, if you overstate an expense, what happens to your profit? So instead of, let's say, revenue 1000 your expenses should be 800 but we count it as 900 so your profit is 100 Here your profit less than you get than 200 so your profit is And that's hopefully we need to be thinking about. I don't get far because you're trying to kind of think about what's happening down the line, but it's essentially simply if my rent is overstated, my overstated, my expenses are understated, just like moving them. Any questions here? Okay, so we decided it would understate net income, and so that's B. Any questions there? So what I like to do is kind of, and we don't always get to it in one class, so essentially think of this as the, for this paper presentation, part one of chapter 14. It may take us two classes to get through it, so I'm saying. All right. So these are the chapter objectives from the book, and I put them into some actionable items that will help you say, do I know what he's talking about at the end of class? Did it make any sense to me? And if you didn't, you can ask me those questions. We probably won't get through all of this stuff, but we'll see where we go today. Okay, so let's think about, okay. Or merchandising.
So typically, and know that when I say one account, we're simplifying things, right? So. And I will post this, so if you feel like I'm either going a little fast and you don't feel comfortable saying it, this will be out there for you. So don't feel like you have to write every bit of this down as fast as you can. And don't hesitate to stop me. In a small class, we'll probably have plenty of time. Or a manufacturing company. Raw materials. Works in process. Sometimes you'll see it as works in progress. Right, just something that's having something being done to it and finished goods. And these for the inventory accounts, we have all the materials. And flow into work in progress. And we have done their more finishes. Right, these accounts, and then when it's sold, it goes to profits. And you keep in mind when you have your finished goods and you take out the profits of goods sold, you're taking the profits to share anything you want. Now, some of you are going to remember your material for the second intro class that when we have manufacturers, what looks flows in the working process, and that would be direct labor. And we don't turn forward. And lose all, all the way to working problems as well. So I just wanted to show you the flow. You can have a mind you've seen it. Don't feel like I'm going to do something totally new for the action.
I showed you this inventory equation. Closure ending. And so algebraically, we can modify that, move it around as we need it. We talked about perpetual versus periodic. Schedule and inventory systems use computers to track inventory in real time. So, sales of inventory reduce inventory immediately versus at the end of the period. Periodic means that inventory is done usually annually. But can be monthly or quarterly. inventory entries are done at the end of the period. This reduces inventory and moves it to cost of consumption. Okay, so you have things they have to think about when you want to control inventory. So three of the main not enough inventory. What happens when we don't have enough inventory? Lose sales. Too much inventory. So, in particular, when you say bad, that would be like food that sweat. Um, but the way you're articulating is right. Think about if you want. Generations of you can buy also the same house, but what's the value of the things it costs? They go way down. So you have a few things here, or actually a handful of things that occur here. You're Decreases in value or spoils. You have to pay taxes on it.
you have to store it. Which warehousing is expensive. Hey, and the third thing, protection of inventory. Inventory's got to be secure, have to be processes properly. Sure. Basically, I Three, they have to do two things. They have to audit the financial statements, make sure they're reliable and verifiable, faithful representation. Which, by the way, is sending you for secure responsibility for the financial statements is already in the management. When those companies go bankrupt, guess what they usually sue? Well, if they go bankrupt, they cannot go bankrupt. They do sue them, but what's right? Where are the other defense? Is that they follow the procedures on the Said by PTAOB, and it's generally if that been account audience standards. So, as long as the auditors follow the bounds, they 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 it's not a fault. They're mandated, and then they do it. And then, so very very expensive, right? Got to lock up the You got to have somebody inventorying. You got to have somebody with a key. All that stuff. And also, what have we seen? At, I don't know if you guys pay attention much with going on the news kind of business. What have we seen at here? Walgreens, right? And so this has to be balanced. You want to protect it, but what's happening in the stores? Nobody wants to buy those. So Walgreens, I think it's probably 2,500 of his next year or two out of 80 in one store. And it's a lot of, you know, those are the issue. But when they do measure like this, then it also reduces the amount of people can get rapid restriction, rapid things that you can get out. We would be changing it much for the APD. The number of the APD is new controls. Yeah, so they're starting to go bankrupt. So we see things like this all the time. And I think Walmart is like the biggest in when it comes to this room because this is the issue. To bring it up. So you got one guy trying to do the job, that's two or three guys. Dallas and Pena. Uh, and the training start out. Well, guess what? They just find themselves on that money. So what we call payrolls it is you all two billion dollars in day because you gave yourself six hundred million dollars in cost. Well, that's foolish, right? So these things are super important. The compliments. Sure can. No worries. Oh. 
his mate can't take a drink of water and stop sweating for a second. Excellent. So let's look at some examples. We'll start with example one, and I will walk through, but just take a second to read it. Okay. So we know it's a manufacturing company, so we expect it has raw materials plus work in progress, plus finished goods, equal inventory. I think, uh, you know, another thing, because I think sometimes students get confused. Remember, the supplies are not the main supplies to do the job, but things like oil, you know, the Supplies are not in the work. So here we've got our raw materials. I'm not going to put the zeros in. 27 plus our work in progress, 59 plus our finished goods, 97. Now, I'm terrible with math, but I always like to try it. So we got 156 and 27, 73. You guys can use your phones for calculators in class. You can use your computers. Um, I had a math teacher with me today. He goes, your students using calculators. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, use Excel. I was like, yes, but in class, obviously, everybody's having some of these calculators. Okay? If you're doing that, don't wing it like me. I don't mind looking like I do with this every once in a while, plus it keeps you guys involved getting that number. So what do we decide? 183? So that answer is C. Okay, so now here we have this inventory equation. And so you'd say, okay, what is my beginning balance? Plus in this case, what are we looking at here? Do we have purchases during the month? Purchases total 7.6 million. So we do have purchases. And then we're gonna have our cost of goods sold. And that's going to equal our ending inventory. So that should be equals, not a plus. Okay, so here we fill this in 624. Oh, so good. 7,653. Sorry, this should be minus cost of goods sold. Minus your cost of goods sold, 7389 So we do that math, and hopefully it comes up to 888000 I almost, it, it, on tests, almost never type the zeros. If you're using this, I will be showing it.
Okay, now this is for you to practice. So we didn't even talk about journal. Well, we did a little bit, but let's go ahead and through this first. So well, our first entry is going to be merchandise, a debit merch inventory. It's cash. And you guys calculate that amount. And then the second one will be cash. And don't worry, you'll have time. Don't feel like you got to jump for this now or squeeze it all in. You can do one at a time there. I'm just setting up the entries for you. So take your time, yeah, for your four minutes, and just allow that is in practice. Is this something that brings I'm just used to, <laughs> used to looking at that one. Does anybody need another minute? That's okay if you do, just give me a little. Everybody good? Okay, so let's walk through these. So the first thing that happens, remember it says it uses a perpetual inventory system. When it's asking you for journal entries, remember anything from the balance sheet that has balance. One year. 
in the next month for assets, liabilities, and equity that does not apply to any of the other statements. Okay, so here we purchased 150 and our cost was $34. So we have a debit of $5,100. First, because we have to match our journal entry, $5,100. Now we return six of them, so times 34. We got 204 there and 204. We have sales, 125 times 50, and number 6,250, and we're going to credit sales, 6,250. But now our cost of goods sold is not correct, so it has to be a two-part entry. And if we're perpetual, we do that immediately. If we're periodic, we do it at the end of the period. But the entry, at least if we're just looking at this small part, is the same. So we have cost of goods sold, 125 times 34. Now, here we're not worrying about how the inventory flows first in, first out, weighted average, any of that stuff because all well, our costs are the same. And yet, in bonds, that is 34 all each, only 34 each. If they were different prices, then we would need to know what their cost assumptions were, and that could be specific assignment or Lifo, flat, and first out, Lifo, first in, first out, or the weekly average of the dollar. Or rolling weighted average, too, I'm sorry. Okay, so this last one, 4,205. And if I mess up on any of the numbers, please let me know. Uh, that's just 4,250. Okay. No, no, no. More likely I did than you did. Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Any questions on that first practice? Here's a little minute. Practice number two. we get for practice two. Anybody want to take a stab at it? Finished goods is most like merchandise inventory. Did I see a whew back there? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're approaching an hour now. I only get like an hour on Zoom to record and it's actually at a good stopping point. So we'll, we'll wrap this up. On Tuesday, I will have the next handout for you then, um, and we'll uh, we'll cover the rest of this and any you know we'll start the new one if there's time allowed. All right, you guys have a safe weekend. Thank you. Appreciate you coming back. And if you need me for anything, I am in two twenty nine, not two nineteen. Like it's right down this hallway. Like you just walk in and you walk into my door. So what I do before I leave here now is I go into the modules. And if you have any questions on that, you guys won't see these here. Don't worry. 
But what I'll do is I add this on there and I load it as a file. And so you'll see this. Call it save it in. See what I named it. Sorry about that. But it'll be loaded up right underneath and it'll show you everything that we covered today. In general, they will be before your social class and the chapters. Thank you. Yeah, I